Pastor Stanley. This is Children's Church from Hudson Hall today. I'm so excited that you have joined me today. We're going to get started the way we always get started with a time of prayer requests and praises. So if you've had anything this week that has happened to you that's really good and you want to tell God thank you for that, I want you to say that in just a minute. Also, if you know someone who's sick or sad, or hurting, or just someone we want to ask God to be with that person. I want you to say their name out loud right now as well. Or if you have a situation that you're going through, something that you want God to help you with, say that out loud right now too. And we're going to lift those things to God together in prayer. So I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to say those things, things you're thankful for, and things you would like to pray for. Do that. So, I wasn't able to hear those things that you just said, but God heard each and everything that you just said. And we're going to lift those to God now and pray to God to open children's church. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this time we're able to come together to worship you, to learn more about you, God. And we lift up these prayers and praises to you, God. We thank you for the good things you have blessed us with. In our lives, God, and we lift up the names and situations in our lives right now, Lord, that we would like you to help us with, and the people that you that we would like you to help, God. We pray that you would be with them, lead them, guide them, and help them in all that they do. And I pray that you be with each and every kid that is watching Children's Church this morning, Lord. Help them to know that you are always with them, you will always love them, and you will walk with them every step of their lives. God. We pray you be with us now as we learn more about you and as we worship you and as we praise you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so we open with prayer. We always move from that to another prayer. We move to the Lord's Prayer. If you've been with us before, you know the reason that we say this prayer every single Sunday is because when Jesus was here on earth, his best friends, the disciples, they asked him one day, Jesus, how should we pray? And Jesus told them, pray like this. He taught them to pray using this prayer. So this is something we pray every Sunday morning. Whether you're in the traditional worship service, you're in the gathering worship service, or you're down here in Children's Church with Mr. Stanley, we always pray this prayer on Sunday morning. So we're going to pray that together now. If you know it, pray along with me. It starts our Father. If you don't know it, just listen. You'll pick it up as we pray it each and every Sunday. So let's go to God now again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good job, kids. All right, so if you've been with us the last couple of months, you know that during the Bible story time of Children's Church, we've been doing a series called Heroes of the Old Testament. We've been telling some of the great stories of the Old Testament, and we've been talking about the heroes that are involved in those stories. And we've talked about people like Joseph and Moses and Ruth and Gideon and Joshua and last week we talked about, do you remember what we talked about last week? Anybody? David. And we talked about David fought Goliath, all right? So we've been talking about these heroes of the Old Testament. And if you've listened to a bunch of these stories, you may have picked up that there's something similar about all of these stories. All of these heroes of the Old Testament have times in their lives when they're put in difficult situations, when they're put in scary situations. Sometimes they just happen to be in them. Sometimes God actually asks them to go into these situations and do something for him. But every time they're in the midst of these scary and difficult and sad and weird situations, they place their faith and trust in God. And they place their faith and trust in God. And when they do that, they do amazing things for God. And they become heroes of the Bible. So I've been asking you the last couple of weeks that when you're in your life and you enter into a time where something happens in your life and you get scared. 
or you get sad, or you get worried, I've been asking you to think about these heroes in the Bible. To think about them, and when you have those times in your life, to place your faith and trust in God just like they did. And to always remember that God is always with you. God will always love you, and God will walk with you through those hard times. So I want you to remember that today, and we're going to tell another story, and it's very similar. We have a person who ends up in a kind of scary situation, right? His name, our hero in the Bible today, is Elijah. Can you say Elijah? Elijah. Good. Okay, so Elijah had a special job. He was a prophet. And when you hear the word prophet in the Old Testament, that means that Elijah was someone who God would talk to. God didn't talk to everyone in the Old Testament. He talked to certain people called prophets. And he would talk to the prophet, and the prophet would deliver God's message to a group of people or to a certain per person. So they were messengers of God. All right? So that was Elijah's job. And one day, God comes to Elijah, and he says, I have a message that I need you to deliver. And Elijah is wondering, well, who's it going to be? Who am I delivering this message to? And God says, I'm going to get you to deliver a message to the king of Israel, the king of God's people. His name was Ahab. Can you say Ahab? Good job. All right. So he says, but here's the message. Ahab has been doing some bad things. You see, Ahab was the king of Israel. The king of God's people, but he had stopped believing in the God of Israel. God, the God we talk about. Instead, he had started believing in another God called Baal. There was just a God in the Old Testament that some people worshipped. His name was Baal. Now, is there really a God named Baal? No. Is there only one God? Yes, and it's the God that we worship, right? But there was this God that some people believed in called Baal in the Old Testament. And Ahab had started believing in Baal. All right? And God was not happy with that because that's the first of the commandments. You shall have no other gods except me because he is the one true God. And God says, Elijah, I need you to deliver a message to Ahab. Here's what I want you to tell him. I am upset that you have started worshiping this God named Baal. And because you have done that, your punishment, it is not going to rain in Israel for a number of years. All right? That's the message. And so Elijah goes to Ahab, and he delivers that message. He says, God is not happy with you because you have started worshiping another God. And because of what you've done, it will not rain in Israel for years. And as soon as Elijah delivers that message, he runs away. Why? Because he knows Ahab is going to be angry at him. And Ahab was angry. Ahab actually tries to kill Elijah. So Elijah has to go into hiding for two years. Because Ahab, who doesn't believe in God, thinks that it is Elijah that's going to cause it not to rain. And so Elijah goes into hiding. And it doesn't rain. For a number of years, there's no rain in Israel. And we've talked about this before in the Bible. We've talked about whenever it doesn't rain, the plants don't grow. And the animals that eat the plants start to die. And then the animals that eat those animals start to die. It's not good. And there's not a lot of food in Israel. And the people are miserable. And this goes on for a number of years until finally God comes back to Elijah and says, I need you to do something else for me. And Elijah says, okay, tell me what to do. And God says, I want you to go to Ahab. And this time I want you to challenge Ahab. I want you to set up a challenge that's going to prove that I'm God. And Elijah says, okay. And God shares his plan with Elijah. And Elijah goes to Ahab, and he goes, God has sent me here today to challenge you. We're going to see who the one true God is. Is it God, or is it Baal? All right? And he goes, here's how we're going to do it. He challenges Ahab to this. He goes, I want you to gather all the prophets of Baal that you know, all of them, and I want them to go up on a mountain and meet me on top of that mountain. Here's what we're going to do. When we get to the top of that mountain, we are going to have a contest. All right? And Ahab says, okay, I believe in Baal. I don't believe in God. I believe in Baal, so let's do this. And so they go up on top of this mountain. And if you can imagine, the mountain was called Mount Carmel, if you're curious. Mount Carmel. They go up on Mount Carmel, and on top of that mountain, there are 850 prophets of Baal right here. And there's Elijah, one prophet of God. And Elijah said, here's the challenge, all right? We're going to set up two altars. We're going to set up two altars, basically a large pile of rocks 
and a platform of sticks on top of those rocks. We're going to put a dead cow, basically, it's a bull, on top of here as a sacrifice to our gods. A cow here for Baal, a cow here for God. And then we're going to pray to our gods. I'm going to pray to God, you're going to pray to Baal, and we're going to ask our gods to send fire from heaven to burn up these altars. And whichever God does it, that is the one true God. All right? That's the challenge. All right? So they're all up on the mountain. Also, Elijah had told Ahab, I want you to also bring as many people from Israel who would like to come watch this. So if you can imagine this scene, here's Elijah. Here's 850 prophets of Baal. And there's a large crowd around them to watch this happen. Now, again, God has told Elijah to do this. But imagine being Elijah right now. You're on top of this mountain. You're all by yourself. And there's 850 prophets of Baal. There's a large crowd of people. Do you think he was a little nervous? I think he was probably a little nervous. He believes in God. He trusts God. But on top of that mountain, he had to have felt all alone. But guys, the Bible says he does trust God. And he says, God has told me to do this. God will make this happen. All right? And so he tells the prophets of Baal. He says, you go first. And so 850 prophets of Baal begin to pray. And they pray to Baal. They pray to Baal and they say, Oh, Baal, send down fire from heaven to burn up this altar that we have made for you. And they keep praying. And they keep praying. And they keep praying. And nothing happens. All right? And so they get desperate. They start to dance as they pray. And they're dancing and they're praying. And nothing happens. All right? And Elijah he probably shouldn't have done this, but the Bible says he does, so I'm going to tell you. He starts making fun of the prophets of Baal. He said, well, where is he? Why isn't he answering your prayer? Maybe he's taking a nap. Maybe he's too busy doing something else. And then he even says, maybe he's on the toilet. Maybe he's in the bathroom. And Elijah is making fun of the prophets of Baal. They don't like that. So on top of their praying, on top of their dancing, they actually begin to cut themselves, hoping that if they cut themselves and they bleed, that, the, that Baal will listen to them and that fire will come down from heaven. But again, does Baal exist? No, he doesn't exist. There's only one God, and it's our God. So Baal doesn't answer. And they finally, after doing that all day, they give up. And it's Elijah's turn, okay? And Elijah comes up. Again, he's all alone. Surrounded by people, all eyes are on him, and it's time for him to pray and ask God to bring down fire from heaven. But he doesn't do it right away. He wants to make it even more impressive for God. And he says, before we get started, I want you to take four large jugs of water, and I want you to pour them on top of the altar. Soak the altar to where it is soaking wet. The rocks are wet. The cow is wet. The wood is wet. It's soaking wet. Because do things, if they're soaking wet, do they normally burn up? No, water puts out fire. So he says, soak them. And they do. So this altar is soaked with water. And then Elijah drops down on his knees and he prays to God. And he asks God to send fire from heaven to burn up the altar so that the people of Israel all the people who have gathered there to watch this competition will believe in God. And the minute he's done praying, guys, fire rains down from heaven, hits the altar, and burns it up. It even burns the rocks up, this fire so hot. Not only does it burn up that altar, God burns up the altar of Baal as well. And the Bible says that the people who have gathered drop to their knees began to believe in and praise God. And the prophets of Baal ran away. All right? Cool story? I love this story. Fun fact for you. The first time Mr. Stanley ever went to church in seventh grade, that was the story that I heard. This was one of the first stories I ever heard about God. So this story has always stuck with me. But guys, what I want you to think about is what we've been talking about for a number of weeks. Elijah had to have been a little nervous, all by himself, standing on that mountain against 850 prophets of Baal. He was probably nervous. He was probably a little bit, bit scared. He was probably a little bit worried, anxious, but he places his faith and trust in God. 
He believes that God will be with him, that God will help him, that God will do what he said, and that God will walk with him through that scary time. And God does, and Elijah becomes a hero of the Bible. And so, guys, I want you this week to remember this story and remember the other stories of all these heroes we've been talking about because you're going to have times. You're never, like I said last week, you're never going to have to fight a giant like Goliath. You're probably never going to be on a mountain with 850 prophets. That's not going to happen to you. But you are going to have times in your life when life gets scary. Things are going to happen in your life that scare you, that make you really sad, that make you nervous, that make you anxious. And guys, I want to just ask you guys, when those times come, remember these heroes of the Old Testament. Remember Elijah and place your faith and trust in God in those times. Spend time with God, praying and reading your Bible during those times. And remember and remind yourself during those times, God is always with you. God will always love you, and God will walk with you through those scary, hard, and difficult times, and God will help you during those times. I hope you'll remember that this week. I hope you'll remember this story of Elijah, and we'll be back next week for another hero of the Old Testament. Guys, we miss you. We love you. I'm going to close us out in prayer, but we'll see you soon. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for these stories in the Old Testament, these stories of heroes of the Old Testament, how they placed their faith and trust in you, God. And we pray that you would help us to have that faith and trust in our lives, every day of our lives, but especially, God, when life is scary, when life is difficult, you would help us to remember you, that you would help us to spend time with you, reading your Bible, praying to you, and reminding ourselves that even in the hardest, most difficult, scariest, saddest times, you are always with us. You will always love us, and you will help us through those times. God, we pray that you be with us this week as we continue to get used to a brand new, weird school year. And we pray again for all the prayer requests that we mentioned at the beginning of Children's Church today. We love you, God, and we pray that you watch over us as we go throughout this new week. It's in your name we pray. All right, kids, we'll see you next week.